name Jim Holland. He is a Cape Cod artist. Um, he lives in the Lower Cape area, and he was inspired by Hopper himself. He likes to paint in Hopper style, so it looks very similar to it. And this is actually Hopper's house down in Truro on the National Seashore. He spent a lot of summers up in Mohegan in Maine. Um, he likes to paint the same scene over and over and over again in order to capture different elements of light. So he's painting things that are going to look more realistic, even though in this particular early painting, you, if you all come a little closer, you can see that the brush strokes are not as clean cut as his later work is going to be. Marston Hartley, he is really interested in the movement and the colors that are going on in this painting. Now, a lot of his American paintings tend to be landscapes and then inspired, a lot of other paintings are going to be more figural paintings and those are inspired by his years in Germany. This is not a real location. We get asked all the time here in the gallery, where is this? Where is this? This is anywhere that you would want it to be. This is in Mr. Lawson's head. Right, and this is just about his journey, a peaceful journey home. So we actually have created a prompt over here, you know, this is talking about putting yourself in the scene. If you were walking down this road, where would you be headed? Um, this leads me to a nice point. This photography is welcome in the gallery at any point. You are welcome to take pictures of the paintings. You're also welcome to put yourself into the painting. If you come close, so you're welcome to all come close, if and actually stand to the side, you can see the way that he creates, he polishes all the layers of his paintings to create this glossy finish. And it actually looks like glass as you're looking at the side. Wow. You can see the technique that he's using in order to kind of polish down the layer, create a certain effect in the way that he's painting. Some layers are not po as polished as others in order to add texture, but they're all layered underneath each other. So the finish layer is all very, very smooth. And although his sweatshirt, you can see the the creases in his sweatshirt, and you can see the creases in his pants, his face is very obscured. And so you're starting to lose the detail, um, creating a sense of mystery. Why is this man out here in his canoe? And yet, they're not real places in, in, or real locations. Instead, he creates a scene that anybody could put themselves into. So we have so many people that come here and they say, oh, this looks like Montana, oh, this looks like Colorado, oh, this looks like Maine, oh, this looks like Vermont. Right, this could be anywhere, and it lets you read it in terms of how you feel about this painting. Creating these imaginary scenes and creating a sense of calm. And yet he's also playing with these ideas of grandeur and scale, similar to April Gornick, where his mountains are taking up two-thirds of his painting. And the house almost seems like it is not proportional to the actual space itself. It's very, very small. It seems to be located on a floodplain. Elizabeth O'Reilly. She is creating, you know, you're looking at these before all the people start walking down the streets. Um, she's taking an industrial park over here and she's making, using bright colors in order to make it more inviting. She wants people to look at these scenes that you would normally walk right by and not even notice. And take a step back. That location. You're sort of above it all. You're looking down. And, you know, this memory for many people is a very hard memory. Um, a lot of a lot of very bad things happened in this particular space, and yet she's using the motion of the color in the construction to make it brighter. She's bringing out these pops of color, and her intention is to remind people that out of the ashes of things comes hope. You're looking at a very small image, right? You're looking at a window. This is the small area of the city that you're capturing, and yet he's chosen to put it on this giant canvas in order to sort of blow up the idea of all this chaotic movement in this very, very small space. We have all had lots of conversations in this exhibit about what is actually a landscape and does this count as one? Um, but the nice thing about it is it doesn't really matter, right? Landscape is what you decide it's going to be. Things where artists who are looking at these areas, they're pinpointing areas where we need to be focused on making things better in the environment. And all of a sudden we start to do these things. We're starting to clean up. So art definitely can influence a lot of what is currently going on in the world. ...of this one particular tree. This is a tree out in the Pacific, um, Pacific Coast. It's a cypress tree. And he, he talks about it as being a portrait of the tree. So you can actually see it as a, as a character in the narrative that's going on. Um, Sam doesn't like to pick beautiful trees. He likes to pick trees that have a history. So as you're looking at this tree, it's very weather-beaten. Right? It has scars on it, some of its leaves are starting to fall off, and yet when you look at it, you're struck by the beauty of this particular painting. It's very realistic, it's something that we can all relate to. Trees, we see like this all the time, and yet you kind of walk past them because we're not necessarily seeing, and yet we should be looking at these types of things. Up, And it's very obscured in the background as to what else is going on around the tree. 
you look at the one in the fall, though, this tree, her maple tree, is very barren, and it becomes less of the focus, and the pine trees behind become more of the focus. So you can play with the same setting over and over and over again and get, draw your viewers' eyes to different details.